a new friend for Arthur. <laughs> Arthur was enjoying his new home along the coastal run very much. His line runs along sandy beaches and the ends of the fishing village, where Arthur most loved to be. <laughs> the fishermen were so fond of the big red engine that they had taken to calling him Arthur the Seaside which made Arthur very pleased with himself. Also fond of Arthur were Duck, Oliver and the Scottish Twins, whose line runs with Arthur for a long stretch on the coast. They still talk about when Arthur accidentally ran into the back of Duck's train. Donald and Douglas could never let him forget about it. With the title Seaside Engine, Best be glad it was fruit instead of fish in your funnel, they teased. One day, Arthur was waiting at the station for Oliver and his train to pass. He was on his way to the harbour with fish for the market. A friendly whistle came from the distance. Beep, beep. Hello, Mr. Seaside Engine, Oliver tooted cheerfully. I trust that you'll keep your trucks behind you instead of ahead of you this time. It would be a shame if you crashed into Duck again. I'm glad it wasn't you, Oliver. I'd be horrified if I had to hurt your smart brake van. Toby. Oh, Mr. Arthur, you are too kind. Don't listen to Mr. Oliver. He fell into a turntable well not long after we arrived. Oliver grimaced in embarrassment. You don't say. Perhaps we should both look at where we're going from now on, Arthur chuckled. Dude is a little chatty sometimes, and he says things he doesn't mean, Oliver said, giving his brake van a stern look. And he also tossed Scruffy to bits in the yard not long after. He's really quite something to behold. Ever faithful Tudors, Oliver sighed, rolling his eyes. Arthur laughed and left with his train. It must be nice to have one's own break van. I wish I did sometimes to keep the trucks in order, Arthur said to his driver. Ah. That takes me a special kind of bond, and a special bond takes time to make. For now, any break van is as good as another. All the same. Arthur could not stop thinking about brake vans. When he arrived at the harbour, he set down his vans and ran to the side to rest while the fish was being unloaded before taking the empties back. He only just shut his eyes where he heard a voice mutter from the siding next to him. Arthur thought he must be dreaming. But the voice came again. He looked and saw an old brake van staring at him. <laughs> the brake van said, Are you woods to earth? No, but my line runs by there. Why, who you like Oh, that's it. What do you the go? He said sadly, Are you witch? I won't see them again. Arthur remembered what his driver had said about special bonds and smiled. You were their brake van, weren't you? Arthur said. You know, quite speaking, I... Of course, I'll take you to them. They'll be delighted to see you and rekindle your special bond. This is not exactly what the van had in mind, but before he knew it, he had been exchanged for Arthur's other brake van, and when the vans were empty, they set out to the Little Western. You know, you are too kind to do this, but I must insist that... Think nothing of it, Arthur said, beaming. After all, who am I to get in the way of a special bond? The van felt very nervous. He had not forgotten what happened the last time he met Donald and Douglas. Later that afternoon, Arthur waited impatiently in the yard with the brake van waiting for Donald and Douglas to return from their seaside excursion. Oh, they'll be so excited to see you! But 
man was not so sure. Soon, the Scottish twins pulled into the yard. When they saw the brake van, they were speechless. Aren't you happy to see your old brake van? Arthur said gaily. Uh, why? said Donald. Uh, who? spluttered Douglas. Oh, where did you find that pile of scrap metal? Arthur was confused. I thought it was your brake van. He said he wanted to come and see you. A uh, brake van indeed, Douglas said. What's a muck of nuisance? Always a muck of nuisance! He came to sneer at us like he once did! Arthur looks at the van. Is that true? Great man, I'm ashamed. Well, it's put so to Dora to Douglas. I was young and foolish then. But when I had my accident, I thought since they were able to repair me. But I promise that I have a changed brain the twin snorted. I wanted to see you again to tell you I'm sorry. Donald and Douglas were surprised. You mean you gave me a roll of wages to tell us I'm sorry? I waited years to tell you, but I've been away from the main line and no one was listen to me. But it's my action did. He looked appreciatively at Arthur. Well, thank you, the both of you. Douglas said, smiling. It has taken us a long time to get over all the mess. But we forgive you, Donald added, but suddenly looked concerned. We'd better get you back to the mainline station. Yeah, but that's where you're stationed. No, said Arthur. He'll stay with me. What's that? Donald smirked. I need a good brake fan to help keep my trucks in order, said Arthur. And it seems this van wants to help make things right. Then why not let him? The twins looked at each other and then grinned. If you've been needing that brake van, then I reckon he's yours. The brake van beamed. From then on, Arthur and the brake van ran up and down the seaside together. The brake van was true to his word and did a wonderful job keeping the trucks in line on the long journeys from the harbour. He sees Donald and Douglas from time to time and never forgets to show appreciation for the twins' forgiveness and for Arthur's kindness.